I just love that one of all best just blowing up blowing up the bridge out of the tower. Stay frosty. <laughs> Poor Yang. And we would have time for more introductions, but <laughs> but shucks. <laughs> one uh, one neat thing here too is that both airships are now able to go over the lava. So yeah, which which you know makes sense because we know that Galbez has been planning this for for a while. He knows about the underground. He knows what to expect. Uh, and of course, with with control of the Tower of Babel, he can go to he can cross between the upper world and the dark world, whereas you know, we are not currently able to. <laughs> this part's cool because it's like the beginning of the game. <laughs> now, here's I think this is what really sets people off. It's not so much that the Final Fantasy IV is bad about having characters sacrifice themselves. Is they do it one right after the other. It's like you just have Yang in a scene, which you know, could be could be kind of poignant and everything. But whereas uh, Sid, you know, Sid is going to. <laughs> there are a lot of silly, you know, I say scare quote uh, deaths that people you know, end up end up surviving anyway in games. Uh, let's just imagine of of Sid jumping out of an airship at a very high altitude. Uh, at a very high speed because they're in a they're in a pursuit from another airship. Uh, at ascending, mind you, to jump out, toss enough high explosives to level a mountain and to collapse it on him, and survive. It's um. Yeah, like Zane said, the twins sacrificing themselves was really touching, but at this point it's like they're just carrying, c killing the characters off uh, randomly. Yeah, it's, it's just happening like, just just one right after the other like that. You know, like e like either one happening, and then you put off the reveal and everything, would have worked great. But instead it's just, you know, it's too dangerous. <laughs> Game face on. And just like at the beginning of the game, we've got a Red Wings theme for our, you know, for our, uh, you know, motivation. Now, here's, here's the thing. We can actually go to, well, Bar we're supposed to go to Baron. We can actually go to where the king was now that we have a summoner with us. Uh, but we will be completely stomped if we try to do it now. So we're going we're gonna to be putting that off till later. And we can also do do anything else we couldn't do before when we got locked out of the Tower of Zot. And and uh, actually, you did have that moment before you went to the went to Agar. But yeah, we are just gonna move on. Hey, Phoenix. Just want to say hello. Hello. That probably leads to the the party system in five. You know, it's it's one of my one of the few complaints I have with five is that it really feels like they left out a good chunk of the story to it. it like, it feels so really simplified, especially compared to, uh, to 4. And and I think a, a big a consequence of that was trimming it down to 4 characters. Well, 5, you know, you know, the, the trade-off. Apparently Sid had a master plan all along. How he thought this would help, I'm not sure. <laughs> This is one of those few parts of the game that's kind of obtuse. You, you don't really get a hint of where exactly to go, just that you need to go to Baron. And it makes sense you talk to the engineers because, you know, when if, if you just lost Sid, you, you'd want to talk to people related to him, which is, you know, his daughter, who probably, you know, doesn't really, isn't really a character, and then his mechanics. But yeah, why he knew ahead of time to get to, to put a hook into it. <laughs> Before you to the journey to the center of the earth and the anime moon. True. <laughs> Okay, the Hovercraft. Well, they know we need to go to the Cave of Ablon. I don't... Oh, right, because that's where the tower is. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I guess, I guess if you did go to the upper world, you try to find the tower, and that would be the closest place to it. 
This is also, I'm pretty sure, when you're supposed to hit uh, Castle Eblon uh, with this team, or even with Edge when you get him. But by that point, the Slumber Sword is way obsolete, and the uh, the Drain Spear not, or the Blood Spear not amazing either. <laughs> Anime Moon is made of, and uh, Jadon spelled it cheese, C H I apostrophe S. You know, we just had a we just had a uh, a block, a cube of, of of ice puns. I think that's the worst one, the worst one so far. <laughs> uh, how are we doing? Um, let's get everybody healed up. Uh, actually, we can. I would go to uh, Dim Cyan, actually. Pop our heads in there and get healed up. That's eh, a little bit of a walk, but... Actually, we need to go pick up the hovercraft anyway, so it makes sense to head north. <laughs> Just made of cheese. <laughs> but no, so I, I actually started playing 5 to... Because I was thinking about joining the Fiesta this year, and I just, I just had trouble getting into it. <laughs> the rule of puns is the worse the better. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just had, I just had trouble getting into it. I got to uh, the second world. I know we just gotten the band back together, and we hadn't lost Galif yet. So it's probably about what halfway through the game. But it's kind of it's kind of you know stopped. I just kind of lost interest in it. I probably will do do the Fiesta stuff uh, next year. It's still it's still a fun game. It's still a, it's still a job system, and I love the job system in, in Final Fantasies. You know, tactics is still still one of my favorite games of all time, and pretty much you know for that reason. <laughs> so I, I mentioned earlier we were going to get some boomerangs before picking up Edge back in Agart, and now is the time to do that. So let's head over and pick up the hovercraft first. Hope to not have too much trouble lining up the square. There we go. And I think good old tor toroidal uh, world physics. We'll drop that off. Perfect. Head back over here. And I think we can... I want to say that we can get him another one there in fairly short order. I'm going to go ahead and buy him two anyway. We've got plenty of cash and... Uh, they're not that expensive. Let's see. We go up and around to get there, I think. Yeah. Good old dwarf town. As if Edge, you can throw everything, including the kitchen sink. Yeah, if you have anything that you haven't sold off, and any weapons you haven't sold off, you can go ahead and have him use as ammo. And it can be a good... If you're keeping him in the back rank anyway, it's a, it's a pretty much the big way of him getting getting a big damage contribution. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep the Elemental Claws for now, and I'm just going to do a test and see if that's enough to bring Edge back up to par or not. You know, time to sell off the Rods. Dancing Dagger is going to be better even on a weakness. Uh, elixir's good. Uh, I think we can buy her a new whip soon, and we'll never use that one anyway. So, let's see. Silver Shield, we're done with. Non-Elemental stuff could be good. Uh, well, actually, nothing's gonna be resistant to fire and uh, fire and ice, obviously. So you haven't saw that one. One well, no, there could be, like the Chimera brains I mentioned, absorb all primary elements. But I think we'll have something better for for candy use before then. Uh, fire, we might still want. Blizzard, I can sell that. Yeah, great bow now obsolete. And then we'll see if Edge needs any of this stuff. All right. I didn't see any boomerangs in there. Let's buy him too. Okay, off we go. And as soon as we do that, of course, we'll have to rearrange the team to put uh, Kane back in the front row and Edge back. What? Oh, we're down here, right? And Edge back to the side, or Edge, Edge, Edge in the third, the third rank. Third person in the second rank. I, I can know, I know words. <laughs> So this is starting to getting. This is really starting to get into one of my favorite parts of Final Fantasy IV. The first time you have your end game party, and is that close enough, or is that? I think you can drive over the airship. No, it can't. But that still works. Uh, the first time you have your end game party, but not in the, uh, but not. You're not going straight to the end game yet. There's still stuff before you get here. 
We can also take the take this to that cave near Silvera. When I mentioned earlier, it's like, hey, you have the hovercraft. How are you going to get to it? Uh, well, the hovercraft isn't here, rather. And you can, this is when you can do that. This is what, now. What, this this now is when you can do that. But uh, there's nothing there's nothing we can do with the guy there yet. So <laughs> one of my favorite parts is the boss rush. No, <laughs> no. The, 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 this first part, this part of the game with uh, the last fiends. Uh, Rubicante is pretty cool. You get Edge. You know he's a. Uh, I, I I like Edge. I realize that may be a minority opinion there. It was because I always liked Rydia too, and you got to an approve of the guy for having good taste. <laughs> bats. Freaking bats. Uh, these are fast enough that... Hmm. I want to say they're going to be weak to fire, same as the others, though. Another weak to spears, which that means let's tag... Okay. So let's tag... Uh, hmm, flame spear. Yeah, because I think we run into other things that are weak, too. Okay, so we have the girls team up, and then Kane and Cecil each have one. Yeah, they should be good to go. Okay. <laughs> I like him because I'm straight. What? <laughs> I'm not sure who, who, who you're impugning, if anyone... Their, uh, their Lorax. <laughs> they make... <laughs> I see Ninja. Sounds, sounds like a Juggalo. What? <laughs> Ninja, please. <laughs> okay, I get, I get that one. <laughs> okay, so have, have the girls team up. Straight at... Oh, right, right. Yes. Man, I, my brain is just not here today because it's funny. I was thinking, uh, I was actually thinking about making a straight edge joke, and then just yeah, when Lorax makes that makes that uh, comment, it's like wait, what? But but right. <laughs> I did not remember SXE, John. What is that about? It sounds familiar, but straight edge. <laughs> Yes, anybody listening to this one on YouTube was it hasn't been in chat. Uh, I am straight edge, so that's a another another layer to it. Although I, I didn't even know the term existed back when I first played the game. Uh, oh, we want the blizzard spear on these guys. Oh, SXE is what idiot straight edge kids call it. Oh, okay, okay. Are <laughs> stealing my jokes, right? <laughs> I don't know what the X is besides X on the hand, huh? So she still has ice arrows. Right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. As I understand it, there's this whole, there's this whole subculture of, of varying degrees of purity, like, uh, you know, whether you have to cut your hair or whether you can have sex or not, or any of those things that all seem like, you know, <laughs> it, it's basically a, a a commitment to keeping. As I understand it, basically, it's what it means to me anyway is a commitment to keeping your mind your own. You don't indulge in things that uh, that change it, like like drugs, you know, whether whether you're doing it recreationally and in full control or not, you know, uh, it's just something that you something you do or not do. And I think it's one reason why I'm not as obnoxious about it as a lot of those people are. Like the, uh... <laughs> exactly like John said, you know, says, well, he could tell it's an excuse to be superior to people who drank or whatever and preached at people. Yeah. yeah I never got that aspect of it, right. I do remember in uh, this is part of the time period where I didn't where I didn't watch WWE, but I remember with uh, with CM Punk they did that they they basically played up on that they made him a heel and did that whole straight edge society part of the uh, part of his character, and it was <laughs> it, it 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 worked let's just put it that way it it was a very effective heel heel gimmick. Uh, so these guys are actually pretty tough, and I'm thinking. Cecil should be able to take care of one by himself. Kane will take care of one. So, yeah, let's, let's burn the MP and straight up nuke that one. They're definitely not worth the risk of of uh, letting more letting any more damage in than we have to. 
or okay, or he could he could fail to take out one vibes because he didn't have the right sword. Right, right. I feel silly. Yeah, in my case, it's uh, I just like to have there there being a uh, there being a term for it and kind of a uh, such as it is a culture you know for it. As you know, my because uh, you know, I, I come from a you know I'm a religious person, I come from a religious family, but it's different from uh, but it's di different just from that you know. For anybody who's ever been to a Baptist church knows they're certainly not shy about about uh, smoking and for a lot of people drinking so. Yeah, with a little hypocrisy on on, the, on those issues at times. That's real monsters. Uh, that's just that's just Rydia summoning summoning stuff. All right, so we have made it to Eblon, Hidden Ninja Village. Unfortunately, things have not gone too well for the Ebl Ebloners, <laughs> uh, and they have been driven from their castle underground. What's their place to live? And now that we've we've killed all the monsters in there, but yeah, it's still a little prohibitive for them to for them to move back. I think we want a yeah, we want a black robe for Rydia. And how are we doing on I think we've got one of each of those, so we don't need too much. Let's see. Oh, we can buy boomerangs here, never mind. Why did I think Agar was important then? Uh, power staff, complete and total waste of time. Uh, edge comes with the kunai. Uh, Archer Bow, I guess we didn't find one. And Poison Arrows are kind of worthless too, so... Yeah, that's... Uh, good good for you all, I, I guess. Alright. So we can right along. I think in one of these places you can pull for a couple things from the... from the starving, destitute villagers. But we're not going to be that terrible. If we ninjas are defeated this easily. Your problem was when you all grouped up. You know, the more ninja you have together, the, the, the weaker each one of you gets. <laughs> I gotta... I gotta approve of Edge's uh, moxie. Let's start making his own way in. <laughs> Aww. I'm sure she says that to to like consult her son there, but I always like to imagine that she was married to the naming way here, and it was just she was just a very you know open-minded kind of kind of lady. <laughs> and I guess Rosa just doesn't trust Ninja because you know he doesn't doesn't even offer to go start healing them up, unlike in uh, Fable. All right, so before we head out to the second part of the dungeon, make sure everybody is good to go. Yeah. This can be a bit of a pain if you want to find everything. Fortunately, the uh, emulator settings make the secret passages way easier to spot than I remember. So that will do fine. Prince went alone. You can just wait until you get until you get Edge to come back for the stuff, but eh, it's, not, it's actually not that far out of the way. I might for the last room, just to get him a little more XP. So I want to say he starts at level 25, so he's already a little a little behind. Stop the prince. What about some here? Okay, nothing. Encounter racing is pretty low, at least. Okay, I'm going to let this one hatch and see what happens. So, Rydia, you are up to start. Okay, or Rosa. Lamia, calling it now. Yes. Which means I think I'm going to want the yeah, fire spear for her. I don't know if anybody else ever has those times when you... Uh, <laughs> oh, I see. It's those moments when you look at a monster and with one of the, one of the old school sprites especially and where it looks like the, the Lamia is kind of... Uh, Oh, <laughs> or the Lamia is resting her her head or her net, her chin on her hand. I always thought that was like some kind of really like really grotesque face, like that was actually uh, like the the part of her hand was actually like her her eye and stuff like that. And to be fair, I played this on a on a pretty low resolution TV, but but still, uh, I 
think we're going to let Rydia nuke this one with fire two. So how about some white arrows and... Well, fire arrows too, for that matter, but... Oh, wrong one. I meant to hit the... I meant to shoot... I meant to shoot at the skull. Yeah, don't be confused by the fact that there are red and there are red enemies and skulls. Uh, this is not red skull. <laughs> so I should take care of all of that. Perfect. Oh, almost took care of uh, took care of all of them straight up. All right. Yeah, jump would would take too long. There we go. How about we give Cecil back his flame sword before I forget again? with all of these fire vulnerable enemies in here. So it is, or the legend for that matter, but. Yeah. All right. So let's see if we can yeah, grab that. Sure again, okay. Those are generic throwing things for, for Edge if you don't want to actually use up any weapons. Yeah, I guess, I guess the dudes are just faster than the ladies at this point in the game. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Uh, I could have sworn that there was some kind of... Like, everybody's ATB filling up and then a tiebreaker system, but yeah, I'm guessing not. That's right, another... another one. I think we verified flame isn't actually a weakness, but, you know, hey. Sure you can! <laughs> Kane, stop changing sides. <laughs> Loras has never liked the throw skill in the, these kinds of games. Is it? I'm, I'm assuming with you, with uh, or with our previous discussions on inventory management, it's basically the idea of throwing away money that that bothers you. Because I can definitely relate to that one. It's like if you if you don't need it to win. And it's just there to be a little more efficient. Then, hey, it's like, what do you fight? Uh, what do you fight battles for? You know, to get more XP and loot, right? So, so it feels like it's kind of being a little counterproductive. Uh, we're gonna want to. You should be strong enough to one to one shot somebody in the front row, even from the back row. I just hate how fast these things are. Let's have her peep one to make sure that I'm right about the the resistances or not. They'll have Rydia switch bros. Yeah, exactly. The fact that it's throwing away money when there's generally a way to do the max damage anyway. It's 400 HP. Uh, Zane mentions there are a couple games where throw is actually good. Any of them off the top of your head? Nice. Okay. <laughs> I love the, the I love the the, the change row pose. <laughs> or the animation rather. Five, okay. Oh, with like a uh, with did five? Ha oh, did five have throw or was it just? Yeah, yeah. Ninja had throw. Samurai had said a not. Is any nagi right? It's like wait a minute. <laughs> I'm here. Cali. can't pass this stuff up. Ooh, two elixirs. <laughs> kind of feels like it's, you, you, kind of feels like it shouldn't even be rewarded for finding rare stuff when it's you know that that obvious. <laughs> and it was, it's always good too to see the skulls popping up with one uh, damage. Is they're pretty tough in the uh, DS version, as I as I remember. And also, if you're the type of person that, that wants to get rare drops in games, uh, they have a. Uh, a rare drop called the Holy Moly! Wow, that's a lot of damage. Uh, but they have a rare drop called the Zeus Gauntlet. I want to say right, and it's, they're the only enemies you can get it from. And it is a or was it the, or was it the golems that you get it from? Uh, I think it's them. But yeah, it's a it's a pretty good item, boost strength and everything, and you have to get it as a rare drop, which is just ridiculous. I figured the fire element bonus would be more than enough for uh, Kane to get one-shot territory. And Rose is definitely one-shot territory with that 3,000. Good grief. 4,000. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
There is no kill like overkill. You can't say you shouldn't say mean things about Prince now that he's passed away, man. That's just that's just mean. Okay. More money? More Phoenix Downs. <laughs> all, all those life potions will need to bring Edge back after he inevitably face plants a couple times. Yeah, the, the, the dude is just so fragile. Very unfortunate. I guess we can have a bad dude to heal Riddy up, too. And part two of, of, of Tower of Babil coming up, though. For, I'd forgotten just how many towers you do in sequence in, in, uh, in this game. Now, I get that towers are like the go-to fantasy fantasy dungeon. Uh, oh, she's up first. Okay. I think you should be able to kill the Ironbacks because they only have 99 HP. And then I know we can have Kane and jump the one in the back. We have Truly. Actually, with this, I think we should be... The two together should be able to do it. And then... She still carries the day. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, there are so many cool uh, drops you can get in Final Fantasy IV, but the drop rate of system is so low, and there's no real way to to increase your odds that it just it, it's just really frustrating. Like we talked about uh, one of the early streams about Rydia and her and her obtainable summons. It's like yeah, most people probably most people probably don't even know they exist. Uh, okay, that should at least sweep the the weaker ones. It's so fast we get two we get two options on our ATB before uh, before you know they they start taking turns. Okay, very least you know they should be. On um, Ridia, bring the Fyra. There we go. Sweet. Well, they're not that weak to fire apparently. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, it wasn't fire and arrows, it was holy and arrows, wasn't it? That, that might explain things. All right, now, as I recall, there is... Yeah, there is a chest there with a, an encounter. Hmm. Ah, we don't, we don't need edge for that. Usually what I do is I go pick, I go pick edge up and then take him back for this one. Like I said, that way you probably want to hit. You probably want to hit the. Uh, let's see, then these guys are actually weak to ice, but then you want to hit the uh, the save point anyway. So why not? Switch the blizzard sword or the frost brand. I think it would be ice brand, right? Cool. No, we're doing. Yeah, might as well. The, the dude should be able to hand... Oh, right. They're actually really, really tough. Uh, how about... I don't know if Keen is going to handle that one on his own. Okay, he did. So this this will definitely do it. I was not expecting them to keep missing Keen, too, but I'm not going to not gonna look some gift RNG in the mouth. So that is the, the sword counterpart of the Drained Spear. And as I understand it, it's basically better in, in every way. It's like, let's check the stats real quick. So 6, 93, 88. And... Uh, 5, 59, So it's a lot better, because, you know, the, the, blood, the Bloodlands was like half of our attacks and, he, and like a 30% accuracy. So it's definitely better, still not good enough to justify it most of the time. I'm probably going to keep it and like put it closer to the top of our inventory. So if somebody's hurt really badly, I can, you know, tag it in and and like have Kane jump or have Cecil get a swing in and get some HP back, you know, for the for the action economy. But I don't think I'm gonna need that. I'm probably going to inevitably sell it before it starts being an issue. <laughs> but you know, that being said, let's go get Oh, I forgot, almost forgot this one. Let's 
go get ourselves our prince. Someday, our prince will come. As soon as we get... <laughs> there he is. <laughs> so, our intro to intro to our you know fifth main character, as you can see by the on the the background on the right there, it is a ninja who goes after the elemental fiend of fire with his fire ninja magic. <laughs> yeah, exactly, John. A drain, a jump is the, is a plan for King. And you actually heal 100% of the damage you deal. Yep, fire ninja magic. I just love that line, I will show you how. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> No edge, I think that was a blast on you. You gotta love how the other three fiends are basically just complete jerks. You kind of revel in chaos and do all sorts of damage and everything. And then you have this one, you know, really honorable uh, guy who actually compliments his enemy, you know. <laughs> Rubiconte is oddly the most complex character in this game, Slur says, and it's probably right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not that the character, it's not that the main characters are bad, but just they tend to be kind of stock. It's like, I really like Rydia, but, you know, she there's not really much, you know, depth to her. She's, you know, a, a, a deep, deeply, you know, a, a good-hearted, just a very good person who has, you know, uh, who's learned to forgive and, you know, Exactly. It deals with loss and everything. It's it's great that there's a character covering that stuff. It is something that people really need to. It is a message people need to hear. Uh, but yeah, there's not you know, <laughs> there's, there's not much emotional. There's not like a lot of heft uh, to to this character. <laughs> Speaking of not a whole lot of heft. <laughs> Here too. That's what she does. <laughs> Have I said I, I really like parts of the the old translation? <laughs> and to the bench with you, Edge. Well, you to the back row, rather. Can't actually bench him. So, about time to tag. Uh, Kane back to the front. Make sure he's got his spear. Yep, good to go there. And double boomerangs for you. Only way to be sure. Also, I think I can... Okay, he has a headband. Oh, he has a bandana instead of a headband. Let's see if it's better or not. I don't actually remember. So 28 and 6. 24 and 6, okay. So bandanas are better. Alright. Works for me. Alright, it is... Hmm. It is 10 o'clock, but... Ah, uh, you know, I think I may have to call it pretty soon. I do want to keep playing, but I don't know if I'm going to get done with the Tower of Babel in about, like, the half hour, 45 minutes Ben would, ben would give me. Hmm. Let me think. Wait a minute, there, there's, a, there's a, actually a boss here, as I recall. I think we basically just run to get the airship and go from there. So yeah, I think I should be able to do that. Yeah, let's, we'll keep, we'll, we will keep, uh, keep moving on. I think that's probably what, what you would all... You would all prefer in any case. 
of how, and the funny thing about Edge's madcap plan of let's dig a tunnel into the enemy secret base is it actually works. <laughs> Thanks to Ninja Magic. All right, so we are back here with the with more more tower tile sets, uh, new monsters, a completely new arrangement of enemies. Uh, you have to imagine there's not a whole lot of crossover between the bottom part of the tower and the top part. You know, the, the you don't want the, the the firemen to hang out with the uh, with the your blade men here. Let's see. I want to say they're going to be weak to... I don't know, why don't I have a walk they're weak to? Let's jump, jump on her. I think I'm going to have to Rosa throw a peep down. So I don't I don't remember this part of the game very well. I remember, the, I remember it being a, a pretty decent jump in difficulty. Actually, if this will do it, then Kane can hit somebody else. Let's try that. A thousand, okay. Weak versus holy. All right, all right. They counter magic with reflect. Well, in that case, let's see if legend is enough to do it in one. Hmm. Ooh, close. Close, but not quite. So, how do we get a little bit more damage on that? Jeez, he saw those holy arrows, right? Let's give that a try, see how much damage that does. Actually, and that will finish that one off, too. Nice! Okay, so Rosa might actually be able to do it in one hit. Which is just bizarre how she's doing more <laughs> doing more damage with the with the white arrows than Cecil is with the the, the, the holy sword of legend. Yeah, that may be for the best, actually. We can save her MP for healing. Will Cure 2 be enough? Okay, so that, heal, that heals about... Yeah, perfect. I think it makes sense. We just got Edge to go ahead and put him up front. Okay, so... Let's see, if Rosa can kill the Blade Man, I'm pretty sure a jump from Kane. We'll do it for the. Uh, we'll do it for the sorcerer. Nice. Okay, that's pretty reliable then. I hope we have enough holy arrows to carry the day. <laughs> and then we'll have uh, Edge and Edge and Cecil team up on the other guys. Yeah, I think we got a good good rhythm here. All right. Cool. It's a mad ogre, great. Okay. Those guys are really bad news. Um, a stop should do it. Okay, that's not quite enough either if, if Kane doesn't roll high enough on damage. Or a or the mad ogre could just wind up and do single digit damage to our mage. Okay. That is perfectly fine with me. Expecting that to be really, <laughs> expecting that to be really bad. Yeah, they. Yeah, I guess they're just not as uh, not quite as threatening as as I remember. Now, their defenses are still pretty high. Yeah, not bad. Hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's two fights in. And it's still, it's still a pretty, pretty challenging start. That's something I like about this too, is that there's, there's break points in the game where it's you get, a, you get a nice jump in difficulty, but not an insurmountable one. You know, I definitely, you definitely prove that. Two ogres with surprise. Okay. Wow. Rydia's got some pretty crazy defense. She must have. Anyway, uh, for a little bit of just because a lot of people may not have tried it. Oh, cure too. It's okay. But yeah, a lot of the t a lot of the things you can actually steal from enemies in this game tend to be pretty pedestrian things like uh, like cure potions and all that. You can't really get any, you can't really get the things for. Uh, this actually might be enough to finish them off with that. 
but you can't really get the, the things that enemies drop by stealing from them. Right, they resist magic quite a bit. I think that's why I, th I remember them being tougher than, than I thought, because you know, the mages can't do much to them, but your physical guys should still be should still do pretty well. Yeah, we'll just have the have the dudes team up on those guys. And Rydia might as well toss the toss the knife in. I'm not having Rosa fight because I want to save those holy arrows for uh, for more of the the blade men. But considering they're vulnerable to holy means that if anything they they should be the the bad men from Final Fantasy One. <laughs> see if they have more handy or okay, I did have a couple more. Good. I do miss in the DS version where you can just where it just gives you a Hedge, still from that egg. Oh, heal potion. But yeah, where you can just you just buy the po you just buy the arrows once, and then you were good to go. I probably should have Rosa heal Edge. That's fine. A green dragon. <laughs> right. Remember what they're weak to, because they're not they're not actually that difficult to kill, as I recall. Well, that's a lot of damage, though, for a for a back back ranker. Yeah, def definitely feel vindicated on. Oh, there we go. Nice. <laughs> yeah, with the kind of damage that uh, the cane is taking. I think we definitely made the right choice putting Edge in the back, at least for now. Eventually, we'll be, we'll be getting in a, a swords that are enough better than his uh, boomerangs to switch that around. But yeah, for now, frozen. So she got another kind of break point on her healing. I think she's curing quite a bit more than she was before. Okay. Well, I saw a treasure chest up here earlier. 